Yeah, call me. Holla. Bo knows. Once again, somebody out there knows Bo. Bo knows Bo. Who's somebody else that we should call out? I know what Bo don't know. Damon John. Somebody out there knows Damon John. Send him our way. We'll talk to Damon John. And the other one is Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Damon John would want to steal my slingshot right off into the sunset, I bet. Here's your host, Mark Bell. How much do you think that guy weighs that just did that voice? Here's your host, Mark Bell. How much do you think that guy yeah. weighs? He's guess. pushing 300 easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know who he is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know who he is. Yeah, he's yeah. Uh, that gentleman weighs about 350 pounds. We had some uh, ladies on the show, and we asked them, we're like, oh, 195? They said 175 yeah. until you no were chance. prodding at them. They're well, like, oh, maybe. But literally they're, double that. They're CrossFit chicks. Yeah. So yeah. that's what they expect a guy to weigh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, normal humans do. This podcast, that. by the way, is really going downhill. This is a big step down. <laughs> we had two hot chicks on at once, yeah. and, and they were we wearing got, like nothing too. <laughs> now we have the biggest bench presser of all time, Eric Spoto. Yeah. This is just not going anywhere. A lot of man meat. Anyone who's listening is just going to drop off. Yeah. Nobody wants to learn how to bench. Except all the fairies. They're they into just this. Wa- <laughs> all the fairies. They just want to hear a hot chick's giggle. On Everybody's the been calling me a fairy on yeah, like but social they, media. They now they're spell killing it wrong. Me. Oh, I don't even know they how to spell fairy. F A I R W E. Or I I R W E. I R W E. Was that French? <laughs> it's been a long day. Oh We've my been God. bench pressing since nine o'clock. Yeah. Wow, that was. Oh shit, that that's was not even like spelling. That's like uh, you know, you threw something else in there. Totally, yeah. that's fucking. Weird. I'd retire. F- oh, yeah. Weird. F A I R Y. F A I R. Why? Yeah, yeah, like, like Jerry. Yeah, but on social media, they're spelling it F E R R Y, which is the kind of you know, like you uh, a boat to yeah, a, ferry. Like a boat across. Isn't that kind of said differently? Isn't it ferry and versus ferry? I think that's only yeah. when you're from New York. You uh, talk like that. Ferry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't hey, that the called the ferry? The fan? Hey, Long <laughs> Island. The ferry. The ferry. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're from, right? You're from the island, right? Yeah, it's a ferry. Strong Island. <laughs> yep. Son of a bitch. How far did you guys grow up uh, away from each other? You're about the same age, yeah? I'm from Poughkeepsie. Yeah. I'm uh, 38. How about yourself there, Eric? 38. God damn. How did we never cross paths? I've never been to Poughkeepsie. Yeah, who would want to go <laughs> when there? Did you leave, uh, when did you leave the East Coast? I was 17. And it was for a girl? It yeah. was. <laughs> Mark was joking. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> It was to go to UNLV. Oh, oh I was right. going to say all stupid moves are always for yeah. a female. It was for Vegas. doesn't matter how strong somebody is. It's always for pussy. You're an educated meathead? I guess. I, yeah. I mean, it's UNLV. I didn't go to Duke. Oh. <laughs> That's still good. <laughs> what's the uh, What's the fascination with the bench press? When did, when did this all start? Um, like 11 years old. Dang. Damn. Yeah, it started young, huh? Just trying to get jacked, like everybody else. Just want to put on like muscle or whatever. You saw some Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. movies, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terminator and Pred- Predator. Why is Predator so good? I don't oh, really like man. Terminator. I think Terminator's all right, but Predator's the original fuck- Terminator. It's all right, but Predator really fucking gets me. Terminator's Pred- pretty deep, though. I think that shit's really gonna happen. Skynet's gonna be fully oh, yeah, realized. Yeah, yeah. We're I gonna agree. be fucked. I agree. The robots are gonna turn on. I us. wish they'd stop making them after two, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a new one, right? It's like yeah. A month. There's another that, that rewrites the whole thing. Yeah. Arnold looks so. Somebody old in sent it. somebody forward yeah. to go backwards and kill somebody so who's in the amazing. future, who's from the past, and so on. It yeah. just gets. And then and then Arnold gets to be old because. They send him back too far, God and, and his skin ages on the outside of his. Yeah, mouth. my head like can't keep up with that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. And, but predator's so simple. When There's does a fucking he... alien, and we're fighting him in the jungle. Yeah. When That's did, it. When does when does uh, the Terminator run into fucking Michael J. Fox from Back to the Future? Yeah, the flux capacitor. And the picture, the all picture together. starts disappearing, and Doo-doo-doo. all that. Terminator's uh, yeah. riding the fucking floating skateboard. God damn, it all gets to be so confusing. Oh, that's that's an intense idea. There is a floating skateboard going on right now. Yeah, You've yeah. talked about this before. You're lying. You've never it's, seen it? You're lying. Yeah, Tony a, Hawk wrote it. Yeah, yeah, it's a maglev kind of uh, deal. Somebody just bought it for their son, like Travis Barker, somebody weird. Maybe the game. I don't know. I follow too many celebrities on Instagram. I get what about anything like a skateboard or riding a bike? You do any of that kind of stuff as a kid, or have you always been a big, yeah, giant Yeah, a little thick. No, yeah. uh, I rode BMX. And oh, I, really? I, I rode dirt bikes, too. Shit. Were you athletic? Did you play uh, some other sports and stuff? I wrestled. Uh, did shot put and discus. You wrestled men? 
Yep, wrestling. Mud wrestling. Oil, oil Mud wrestling out. champ of Long Island. Okay. Apartment there, wrestling. There, there was oil involved. <laughs> you did a uh, shot put, you said? Yeah, shot put. Were you good? Were you pretty good? For New York standards, I was good. Yeah, you were right. I mean, Texas standards, I was probably garbage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Texas and California. Were you able to, like, uh, yeah. were you able to like, uh, win any sort of championship or get to the state finals or anything like that? I took third in counties, but um, I was only in ninth grade. Oh, shit. That's some real shit. Do you do anything like that uh, in your teen or like kind of college years? Look, he's fucking floating on a skateboard. Oh, my God, it's real. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think it's floating. That's special effects. <laughs> <laughs> a floating skateboard? No, it's, it's legit. You, uh, it's just magnetic. You mentioned earlier that uh, you said, I think you said earlier that you could dunk a basketball back in the day. Yeah. yeah what are you, dunk. maybe six feet tall? At best, yeah. So yeah on a Mark says he's six feet. So if I you're lucky, assume. as Andy Bell says, six yeah, feet yeah. If you're lucky. yeah. On a good day, <laughs> on a good, on a tall day, yeah. <laughs> you, uh, I gravity. heard rumors that uh, bench press was not your uh, your first thing you were known for. You were known for the squat. Yeah, the squat. Is that true? Squat was my God my damn. thing. How much could you squat back in the day? Uh, my best was six seventy five for a triple, no wraps. And is that to uh, – that's fucking crazy. Is that to like a powerlifting standard, like a legitimate squat, or is that some sort of uh, high school – Leg press. Yeah, half squat <laughs> kind of deal. I'm not saying it would have got three weights. Oh, but, right, okay. But, yeah, it, it, it you was were deep, down there somewhere. Right, right, it was a deep squat. And uh, max 220. Yeah, that's crazy. 220 body weight, 675. That's that was in high school, early teens? No. Late teens. Yeah, when were you fucking 220? Yeah, that sounds seems That was ridiculous. like 20. That was when I was benching 500, so – 20 years old. Dang. Do you do you have to uh, kind of eat your way up to be this big? Um, to, you're like what 320 nowadays or something like that. I think like 310. It's around 310. Did yeah. How to, dare you? Did you have to? Uh, yeah, I know. So insulting. <laughs> did you have to? Uh, you know, go out of your way and uh, eat a lot of different junk and stuff like that to get this big? Nope. No. Just, <laughs> yeah, just kept lifting. <laughs> it really comes kept easy. Eating. Yeah. You're naturally just kind of thicker or whatever your body wanted to put on weight. Yeah, I got thick bones. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm big boned. Yeah, yeah, we hear we hear these Vegas thick rumors. Bones. That's what I tell the girls. I'm, I'm just big boned. <laughs> you guys can't, obviously can't see on the uh, <clears throat> on the podcast, but his uh, wrists are gigantic. Yeah, his forearms are huge. His, his forearms are huge. His yeah. third leg is huge. <laughs> about a 20 inch uh, forearm, and then about a tw- his uh, said his biceps at its best were around 24 inches. You know, when you're around uh, uh, somebody like this, um, Eric has successfully bench pressed 722 pounds. You can't help but to, you know, just all of a sudden realize how fucking inferior you truly are. I think uh, you mentioned earlier you did 225 how many times? And 70 something? I think it was 78 times. That just doesn't. I haven't done that one in a while. That just doesn't make any sense. It's just. 315 for how many? 62. 405 for how many? Can't remember the 405. 500 for 22. Jesus. And uh, 600 for 9. That's I not, actually, I think it was 605. That's not that good. <laughs> that's really not that impressive. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, those numbers are just, you know, they're mind-boggling. And of course, they match up to, you know, the 722 that you did. No one's, right. ever, no one's ever done that before. Um, uh, but what I found, you know, kind of, I still to this day find just fascinating and unique about your story is a lot of times, like, when I know someone that breaks a world record, um, you know, you kind of he- hear a lot about it or... You know, when you get around someone like Stan Efferding, Stan Efferding kind of had these plans. He had this shit, like, mapped out. And it kind of seemed like you kind of almost came out of nowhere. And I know you've been training for a long time, so it's not true that you came out of nowhere. But you weren't necessarily, like, powerlifting forever, yeah? No. You were just yeah. kind of lifting. I mean, you basically just, basically just did a couple of powerlifting meets, and boom, world record's broken. The all-time biggest bench oh, press. Oh, it's simple. The number one uh, lift that everyone's, like, kind of gunning for. I mean, let's face it. Everyone loves a squat, bench, deadlift. Everyone loves the whole thing. Not everyone but loves everyone, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not everyone loves the whole thing. <laughs> Everybody loves the bench. <laughs> everyone loves yeah. the bench. Yeah. Everyone's always yeah. talking about how much you yeah. bench. And in every gym, uh, you know, nearly uh, most of the big gyms in the country, you can find a couple guys that li- that lift something that they think is pretty good, 455, 500-pound yes. yeah, benches. Yeah. Right. Are, are somewhat you know common, and a 600 pound bench in the powerlifting world is uh, is is at a really really super high level. Stan Efferding right. was able to do a 606 bench, and yeah, when uh, you think about the guys that bench six, they're fucking studs. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Matt Wenning, yeah. Derek Kendall, Stan Efferding, like the guys yeah. that bench six are fucking animals. Yeah, they, they start yeah. to separate themselves out, yeah. you know. But the 700 pound barrier 
is really just on another level. And, you know, when you came along, it was almost like you were just so fucking strong that you got pressure from people on the outside saying, dude, you got to do a powerlifting meet. You got to do a powerlifting meet. You got to do a, you must have heard it so many times that you were like, I should probably do a fucking powerlifting meet. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> is that pretty much how it went down? Uh, I figured this is the time to do it, and I wanted to come out with a a real good number. Not necessarily the world record, but in that 700 range, and I was fortunate enough to hit 700 in my first meet. Yeah, and then you went for seven, uh, 716 uh, and bombed, right? Completely bombed. Choked the, choked the whole, stunk the whole place up. The current record at the time was 715? Right. Something like that. My, my goals for that day would have been like a 735, 740. Uh, wait a second. 715 was held uh, for years by uh, Scott Mendelson. What, Correct. maybe 10 years? And, a little uh, bit less. Yeah, probably 8 and or like, 10 years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Scott Mendelson is is a mutant. I mean, Scott Mendelson, I think, benched uh, 700 or 705 or something like that uh, in the 308 weight class as well. Like, Scott is... The best uh, a thousand plus in yeah, the shirt. Yeah, and he, mean, he also at one point had the all-time record uh, shirted as well as Raw. You don't really see that's not all that common. Right. Yeah. Uh, Scott is, you know, a legend, a legend in the sport. You went and trained with him for a little while, right? Yep, yeah, that's correct. And uh, what was that like? Did you guys kind of go back and forth, or was he doing his shirt stuff at the time? He actually he was doing shirted when I first got there. Then he went off to um, try to actually break the Raw record when I was there, and he uh, strained a pec. Mm. Um, Think doing like a 752 board or wow for a single or whatever it was when you were lifting with him were you kind of like holy shit or were you right there with him i was pretty close to he, he was a little ahead of me at that time when he was peaking at that point right but um he was trying to switch me to the toes back form and it just didn't take for me right Your hips weren't ready yeah, i just couldn't do it so yeah. once i switched back to my form the numbers just started going up and then from there is when you kind of came to super training and then went off and trained with Stan. Is that kind of the order of history or am I way off? I came to super training first. Oh, right. Yeah, this is the first powerlifting gym I had ever walked in, a super training gym. Yeah. First video I had ever done was super training gym. Yeah, that was uh, – I mean, I, I still remember it like it was fucking yesterday when you walked through the door because – Wow. You know, as Dude, there's something as, serious yeah. going on here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I remember like it was yeah. yesterday. <laughs> I'm Punky like, Eric I, walks through the door. I was like, I know that I'm going to end up shaving this guy's back one day before a meet. It's going to be magnificent. I'm going to stuff him into a singlet yeah. that's way too small. Starts the possibilities are fucking. Skips through the door slow motion. Him when I fucking give him the lift off. <laughs> possibilities. What are do you feel about natural spotters? Mark says he's not really into natural spotters because uh, they have really large testicles or, and they're just all in point. your yeah. face. So you like it makes it more, harder to breathe. You like more enhanced spotters because they're stronger and they have less nuts involved. Less Is balls. that kind of the that's the protocol? That makes a lot of sense. No, okay, maybe so. <laughs> now he's going to bet seven fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's thought about it that yeah. much the uh, way I have. I don't think I've ever had a natural lift off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? You don't want to be around too many natural people. God knows what could happen. You, you, know? you limit them. Limit them to your group, like black guys in a movie. <laughs> Only in a movie one. theater? Yeah. The, no, not in a movie theater. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's worse. Oh, that was racist. That was uh, racist. Now we're you crossed be, the line. Now we're going to be racist. Just like your iPhone. Yeah. So, yeah. Mendy 715 Raw was May 22nd, 2005. 2005, and you were 2013 or something. It's about eight years. Was it May 19, 2013? It sounds yeah, right to sounds me. About right to uh, me. It's coming up on two years. Yeah. Aww, when you, anniversary. Um, yeah. <laughs> ah, he looks like he's wearing a little bit of a bench shirt there, but uh, <laughs> I'm not a hater. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Uh, Doesn't it? No Doesn't comment. It? I, I've actually noticed people wearing uh, Scott is skin ungodly shirt, strong. I'm not take take anything away from him, but he looks a little stiff, doesn't he? Maybe I'm a little stiff like right that, now though. with all this yeah. testosterone in the room. Maybe a blair shirt. Yeah. Well, it's a good lift. Ed Cohn's the judge there. Oh, Mr. Cohen, I didn't even notice. Oh, no, yeah. Scott's a tank. He just looks that stiff anyway, I think. I think it's just the way he freaking walks around. He's Traps, like, locks, he's, uh, lock his shoulders in. 308 pounds of muscle, the, pretty the, much. The beast master there with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, the guy, the, the, uh, lift the off. liftoff. The liftoff guy. Yeah, have yeah. to comment her about the liftoff guy. Yeah, that liftoff guy was huge. You can never see his head. He was, like, too tall. And but tall. he's no black John Stockton. <laughs> no. no. You know that's my nickname, Mr. Spoto. The black John The black John, John Stockton. Stockton. <laughs> that's me. The assist man. 
He's always there with the assist. He does. He does a no. The yeah, no I can do look. a no look handoff with about four or five is the limit, though. Yeah, no, no look at five hundred gets a little sketchy. Anyway, Maybe with him. Let's get back to this. What about uh, a reverse handoff? Oh, I could do it. That's also. I, I think I can do behind it behind the back. Yeah. I was thinking about having a couple of the girls I train with to start doing that. Oh, yeah, you're in yeah. Vegas. What kind of girls are going on <laughs> yeah. at your gym? I think it'd work out pretty good. Yeah, sounds great. Oh, hey now. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's get back to this uh, this progression here a little bit. You so you came to the super training, and uh, I remember it quite well. You uh, you were setting up on a bench, and uh, you were just like, "Yeah, I'm just going to kind of come in. I wanted to come in for a workout." Did Stan bring you in? Is, did Stan make the connection? What was your connection? I had never talked no. to Stan in my life. No. So you met Stan after super training. You just walked yes. into super training. I had seen videos online. Yeah, and I was in the area, and I yeah. was like, "I got to go here." This That's awesome. Like, I thought I wasn't there, but actually rem- remembering, I think that we did talk to you. Like Mark shot some stuff, and then I, I talked to you on camera, but I didn't have the the bench press stuff because I was like in late that day or something like that. It I was think that sounds right. Yeah, we were talking about some type of reality show or something. Yeah, yeah, we're still working on it. <laughs> still working on it. Here we are, still working on it. <laughs> I've had two uh, offers for reality shows where I've done interviews on uh, mm-hmm. Skype, and. Uh, Obviously, none of them have went, yeah, went to yeah. yet. Something will happen. Something will happen yeah. with Super Training eventually. I think so. Any fucking way. Back to my fucking story. <laughs> Where was I? So you came into Super Training because... I had seen videos of Stan, and I was like, I got to go to this gym. And you just thought Stan was there. You thought he was like part uh, of it. I mean, it wasn't just Stan, but it was. It looked like the, the, the realest powerlifting gym on the West Coast. I wasn't going to go to West Side, plus that shirted lifting. Right. Um, that's the gym I wanted to go to. And Stan was raw. And like right. what you probably didn't know is like mostly we were geared before Stan. And Stan sort of started the right. the raw revolution for, for us and for a lot of other people too. He yeah. started it for the world. And it, I, it, think it, it really has. I think so. It's, it's taken on a life of its own. Raw lifting is. I think what you did was big, big for it as well. I think guys like Dan Green were big for it too because Definitely. Dan Green is jacked, you know, and it, that, that plays a big part of it. Stan being. Uh, you know, well built and being super strong is a big, big part of it as well. But I remember that day because, you know, you started handling a little bit of weight, and I saw you with 135 and 225. And I remember Ed Koo, who was a super training member at the time, uh, lifted off for you with about three plates, and he just looked at me and he was like, "This dude is like, there's something different going on here. Like, <laughs> I don't." I don't know where the fuck this guy came from or where you found this guy. I'm like, I didn't find him. He just came in. I'm like, I don't know who this ogre. I called you an ogre. <laughs> right. And and uh, Koo started laughing. And then so because I'm an idiot, I don't know why. I've never gotten punched in the face yet. But I went over to you and I'm like, all right, ogre, how much do you fucking lift? <laughs> and I have it. I think that that's part of the video. you know. And you were like, I don't know. We'll see today. And you ended up uh, you know, moving 405 uh, with uh, zero effort and five plates and so on. And I was like, all right, this is getting to be fucking crazy. That's what you thought when I joined Super Training 2, right? Yeah, I was it's like, this silent my guy. <laughs> 225 <laughs> like a motherfucker. 225 on the squat, <laughs> ass to ankles, no belt. Unbelievable. This guy's going places. I thought places. photo was once in a lifetime, but here's how yeah, I like. Yeah. Yep. And so, yeah, I saw you just kind of going up and up and waiting. and it was just fucking, you know, mind-boggling. And then you did uh, 585 for a pretty easy single, I think. And then you did 635 for a double. And uh, I just remember just, you know, thinking like, shit, that's in the uh, realm of like the world record. Like world record strength, you know. And we started asking you about it. And you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we were asking you about you know, like powerlifting meets and stuff. And you're like, yeah, that's why that's kind of why I'm here. I came in yeah. and I want to, this is what I want to, I want to do. But, you know, it's just so rare, um, even though we are a powerlifting gym and we've been a competitive powerlifting gym for a long time. We've had a lot of 1,000-pound squatters. We've had a lot of 700-pound-plus shirted benchers. We've had, a, a, you know, hand, a couple of 500 raw benchers. We've had a lot of great things happen here. A couple guys deadlifted over 800 pounds. Um, and there's been a lot of great things that happen at Super Training. But having said all that, you know, a mutant like Stan or a mutant like you walking in is still few and far between. You know, it, it happens, but it's pretty rare. And when you came through the doors, I was just like, what the fuck is this guy about? Like, what is what is going on here? And with, from that video, 
you became super popular from that video. Then you started doing some of your own videos, and those videos started going fucking crazy. People right. couldn't get enough of those videos when you were doing them. You did a 675 for three, I remember, and people were going, like, people were just like, what the fuck? The anticipation for you to do a power thing meet was yep. through the roof, and people were so excited, and the, and the anticipation... It was almost better that you didn't compete because people were so fucking the Mayweather of powerlifting, right? Yeah, people exactly. build up. Well, people always like to talk about the potential of what could possibly right. happen. They right. almost like that better. Uh, they almost like that better than actually seeing the actual result, like you George know? Lehman, we've like George Lehman. We've been yeah. seeing it for years. Yeah, I don't think George Lehman has done a full powerlifting meet yet, has he? Not a full, but he has the American. They just record smashed now. that deadlift about a month yeah. ago. Yeah, and you know, what? I realized I made a mistake. Yeah, I, it was Urbank. Well, well, maybe. Well, uh, Urbank's just 308, I thought. Oh, maybe. No, no. The American deadlift record, I don't think, was head, head, held by Ed Cohn. He did 901. Yes. Mark Henry did 903. Oh, right. I thought it was Urbank at like 909. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, he might have been in there. maybe. Yeah, I think maybe. Urbank had 308. Maybe. But so yeah, it would be he, the most ever, too. I think it was the most ever, too, right. but it might have been at 308, and I think it was Urbank. We all said Cone on the thing. Yeah. And then so it went. But Cone, that's pretty Henry, nuts. Urbank. They're all whatever nine hundred to yeah. nine. What did yeah. uh, Lehman end with nine eleven or something nine twelve? Yeah, sure something like whatever. that. Whatever. That's crazy. Nine oh nine. Yeah, something all like. within ten pounds. You know, yeah. th- three or four freaking monsters. But his uh, or crap. Were we saying Urbank was the heaviest hook grip? I'm so confused because we were God, talking about hook grip too. Because George Lehman went that. hook grip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. What a freak. I didn't realize. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he went freak. double over. Yeah. Uh, 881 shit. too uh, was done by uh, uh, Brad Gillingham. He did an 881 oh, yeah? deadlift really? in the USAPL too. Maybe was, that's what you said. So yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, USA yeah. stiff bar. Are you crazy? Yeah, Brad Gillingham is strong. Yeah. <laughs> and he's done that probably like 30 times in meets. Oh, yeah. He, right. No, he has, he's the most prolific deadlifter of all time. There's absolutely no question about that. No one has deadlifted over 800 pounds as many times as he has. International competitions, national competitions, uh, local comp. I mean, that guy, is a he's a legend. And he built up his deadlift with a lot of squatting, five sets of five squats with no belt. That's what he was a big fan of. Five sets of five, squat, no belt. All yeah. right, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, it, it hurts. I tried it. And I then, tried it for like one week, and I abandoned it. I and, like, then I'll deadlift, and then I'll deadlift 800, you're telling me? I don't know. I don't know if there's any hope for you, Silent Mike. Is there any hope for Silent Mike? There's hope for Silent Obi-Wan Mike. Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. He's got <laughs> I'm being, so, very, I'm being very quiet over here because I'm actually trying look to Look at that, that fat face. Oh Holy God. shit. <laughs> We're going to be bombarded. <laughs> We're going to be bombarded with uh, questions about the bench, and uh, you're going to have to help people solve their benching problems. Yeah, hopefully so, you guys can go to supertrain.tv. We just filmed for like 12 hours. Yeah, we filmed a, we filmed a lot of fucking shit. Eric was a fucking trooper and yeah. hung out. We filmed tons of stuff. Give me... Uh, you know, I know, I know you're a big proponent of actually just bench pressing and, and being on that bench press for a long time. Right. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of that action going on. Yeah, bench, close grip, wide grip, um, slingshot. But uh, what are – give me uh, – and Mike, think of a few questions for him too. I got no questions. Uh, three, uh, three things to help people with their lockout. That's Everyone always – Every raw guy kind of misses out. at their lockout, right? Okay, so let's start with uh, – That's how they say it too. How do I lock out? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they My say My bench it? press is about two, 225, but I can't really lock it out. Why do they say it like that? <laughs> like a little whiny white girl. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. You're going to want to definitely start with some board work and uh, definitely pause board work to get through those sticking points. And um, usually people can lock it out because if you put them on the board work, they can lock it out, but they don't lock it out from the full range. Right. And I think it's usually they put themselves in a – a bad position possibly too early so how could we overload but use a full range of motion at the same time is there like a device for this is there I heard about something that someone can use thing. that's stretchy that goes across their but it's chest? cheating but it's cheating <laughs> no, no the slingshot definitely is going to be <laughs> one of the top tools because you're going to overload and um, there's a million of those oh really yeah 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 wow. pages and pages they're and looking pages. up for I'm a just, video of your i'm very just trying first, to find your the, very um, first video ever I'm trying to find the time period because... Just type Spoto 635 will come up. You only did that once. You skip 635 every other time. It was too easy. Or Spoto 585. <laughs> it'll come up with one of those. Mark is so there fat is. in some of these videos. There it is. The there very is first right video there. ever. Look at this idiot with his elbows wide. I knew new guy was in there, but it's on the screen, not on the... Uh, yeah, why aren't you touching your chest? You're cheating. That's a 585 <laughs> for three? Okay. That was, yeah, that was fucking... Uh, yeah. Why is everybody in the gym so fat? Some other fucking fat, disgusting oh people in this video. Oh, my God. Look at those lift-off. 
Thank God some <laughs> of those are gone. Yeah. Who's the actual liftoff guy now? Is that Koo? That's Koo. That's the only guy that looks jacked. Everybody else is so fat. I was still doing that technique, though. I was still fucking going under there. Yeah. Oh, oh nice wow. lift off. Yeah. Terrible lift off. It didn't matter cut to you. This one short. Oh, fuck Jeez. that shit. I cut this one short. What was your body weight then? You look a little slimmer. Maybe 285. Damn. That was a long, uh, long press there. Yeah. That was the most I had ever done up to that point. Oh, really? Yeah. And I've never seen you grind like that either. Everything now is, looks so damn fast. Oh, look at Fat Ryan Cove yeah, in the background. Fat Ryan Cove <laughs> is trying to figure out what's this going on. Memories we got on here. Everyone's trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Guy just walks in and yeah. kicks everybody's <laughs> ass. Like, so bad. Fucking terrible. It sure is terrible. It. I had no shirts that would fit me. Yeah, I had to go to a store. the only 3X I had. You're Fat a big, guy affliction shirt. You're a big, yeah. you're a big boy. <laughs> what are you going to do, you know? But, uh, yeah, so you got uh, something like a board press is good for the lockout. I think that's great to hear. Shot. Like, a lot of raw guys think board pressing is only for geared guys. Which but, I used to think. Uh, uh, yeah, you but said, you, you also said pause uh, board pressing. Why, why the pause in there? Because I don't really even think it's their lockout. I think what's happening is because um, if I did a pin press with them with that same weight, they're going to lock it out. Yeah, okay. Do you use pin presses? Yeah, I do pin presses. Yeah. you got to be careful with them. You end up overloading too much. It could be dangerous. But, um. Maybe a lower pin pe- pin press. Yeah, yeah. And then if the the thing with the lockout, I think they're um they're, they're hitting that sticking point, and then they're they're fighting so hard through that sticking point, and they're putting them so, and they just can't finish yeah. it because they just they blew the load on the sticking point. Right, and uh, that sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> sticking point blowing your load. <laughs> yeah, like, Sticky yeah. point. Mind blown. What a pervert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, but uh, it's been mentioned before by other lifters and by Louis Simmons that uh, the sticking point or the failure point is a little bit lower than where you think it is, and that kind of sounds like what you're referring to. So if you do right. a board press, you know, if you're if you're getting stuck at the top, it's not like you need to do a five or six board. No, nope. do a two or three board, or maybe even a one board. Use a pause. Use strict form and technique. Yep. The boards can allow you to handle more weight, but that's not necessarily the entire point. The yeah, you're entire doing point it for some reps too, yeah. is to go through that sticking point multiple times, right? That's exactly what it is. Because if you did put it to a five board and to that same weight you just failed at bench and you'll smoke it for three easy reps. Right. So it's not the lockout, although it just it ends up seeming like it is the lockout. Right. It's you're not able to apply enough force off yeah. the chest and get enough uh, momentum and speed going to be able to finish the entire lift the whole way. You're also not able to kind of maintain position when the weights are heavy. You just kind of squirm around and you, you get thrown out of position, right. kind of like Silent Mike's second rep today with 315. I got a little weird. That was a weird one. I think my elbows just got all funky. I got scared. Two handsome <laughs> men spotting me. I got nervous. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, you, uh, you helped me with my bench programming for uh, most more recently too, and you had me do uh, typical speed work every two or three weeks uh I guess to call it a deload or save your shoulders right. or, you know, kind of a lighter day because the other days I was pressing heavy boards or pressing heavy off the chest. Uh, and I think that's kind of rare even nowadays for raw guys. You know, they think, oh, speed works for geared guys and bands and chains are for geared guys. But right. uh, my bench hasn't felt better since uh, I've been at my strongest ever on my bench since you started helping me. Speed bench did fall out of favor lately. There was a couple royal lifters that acted like it didn't work. Um, I think the way some people do it is wrong, that they'll just drop it like it's hot. And if that's not how you do your competition grip, I mean, your competition negative, then it's not going to work. So try to do everything the same. Exactly the same. Right. And then uh, b- bands really help a lot. Yeah, I like bands. They feel they feel good. It's a good change of pace. Your handle kind of it feels heavy at your lockout, but you can still get it moving kind of quick. The other thing right. we talked about today and, and footage to come, but you uh, – told me that you try to press everything smooth and fast, not try to grind, right? You start right. grinding, your CNS gets used to that grind, then you'll start grinding 80% where you start, everything's fluid, hopefully right. heavy weights you said, like, yeah, I'll, I'll smash 730 and then 745, I might just miss it. Right. But it might as well hit a big weight fast. That's kind exactly. of the goal, right? And then the bands keep you to accelerate through the lift. You, you always want to keep accelerating. Some people blow it off their chest, and then at that sticking point, they slow up too much. If you have enough speed off your chest, you could actually bench more than your sticking point because you use the momentum out the bottom to just fly right through it. 
Yeah, the uh, the bands have always uh, always helped me a lot, and we've we've been talking about them forever. And uh, yeah, some of the raw guys aren't fans of uh, the bands or the chains. Sometimes they're not fans of like the slingshot. But you not only used uh, some of the different slingshot, you used the strongest slingshot, which is also not a favorable thing for a raw guy to do. Um, you know, like can you talk about that a little bit? The Mad Dog slingshot, you like to kind of handle some big weights with that sucker. I mean, it's um, you, it's an overload. So if I, if I'm feeling seven sixty five. And I'm able to put it through a whole rep. When I go back down to 725 or 705, it's just going to feel lighter. And it's all about overloading, and it's overloading safe. It's the safest way right. you can be able to lift and overload, and um, that's why it's so effective. And you also talked about doing reps with it. Like, uh, so you're doing sets of five, add a slingshot on, and now you're going to do the same weight but just for right. more so reps. If I was doing 600 for five, I had a slingshot, I'm getting 10 reps. So now my time under tension just got doubled with that 600 yeah and, and that, that's actually a really big help i think that part of the problem with the with some of the raw lifters that don't like these other methods is that they they turn raw lifting into a religion which it's not right and so like it's all about denying yourself all the things that could possibly help you right totally agree and that's i think that's ridiculous yeah, yeah fuck just, all you listeners well a lot of times <laughs> they're just barbell 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 like a like an olympic lifter and the Olympic lifters, you know, uh, but, in America, they fucking suck because they're not But what do they know following. about pec decks? <laughs> right. Right. Well, because they they're nothing. not doing enough of the assistance exercise. They're not doing – and we know some guys that actually are pretty good at Olympic lifting um, that u- utilize uh, a variety of training. Some of the homies at Cal Strength are benching all the time. Yeah, yeah. right. They're doing a variety of things. They, they follow a jacked and tan plan for a couple of weeks. They, they work on hypertrophy. Yeah, they, work they just on do some bigger. dumbbell stuff. Yeah, and why I not think, do that um, in powerlifting? I think it's important for even a power lifter. Power lifters need to step outside their comfort zone more and do a little bit of bodybuilding stuff and do a little bit of stuff that the shirted and geared guys were doing years ago. There's totally no reason agree. There's no reason why you can't do it. Uh, Ted Arcidi, who, uh, you know, was a, for, was a geared lifter pretty much. I mean, he, there, he didn't have much uh, going on back then in terms of powerlifting gear, but his 705 bench was done in a, in a you know, Inzer blast shirt back in the day. But that guy was incredibly strong. He used to do behind the neck presses, like, you know, four or five plates or some shit like that. You know, he, he actually had the raw two seventy five record. He did six seventy five or something, right? Maybe six sixty six. I'm not oh, sure. Oh yeah, yeah. six sixty. Yeah. And uh, Lazlo Hornstra. Oh, Lazlo Mazuris, I think, broke it, and then maybe Hornstra then had broken it. Yeah, too. yeah, he did I'm have sure. that for a while. I mean, Hornstra did six seventy five. Yeah, Tedder said he had it for like twenty years. Yeah, Tedder said he was huge. It wasn't he one of your big inspirations anyway. Yeah. yeah, that was my one. My yeah, Anthony yeah. Clark and Tedder City. Anthony Clark, God oh, damn, Anthony Clark was strong. Anthony Clark uh, was the first teenager to ever. What about what about pounds, Michael right? Clark Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> no, he can probably be not related. Motherfucker. Anthony still- Clark Duncan was uh, pretty jacked back in the day, but he's dead now. So, yeah. R.I.P. They're both dead, right? Everybody's Tedder dead. dead. No, 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 no. The Michael, Michael Clark, Clark Duncan, Duncan. <laughs> and Anthony Clark. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, not Tedder City. Are they related? <laughs> That's what I thought. Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, sad. So. <laughs> Anthony Clark was like a big Samoan. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Clark was huge. Huge. Yeah. He'd always wear all the, like, uh, he'd be decked out head to toe in spandex. It was disgusting. Yeah. Eric, you uh, you saw, we did a bench press with, like, Robot and uh, our homie Marcus today. And you would see Marcus touch 315 or 365 and kind of by the speed and form um, you could tell, like, oh, he, he probably benches right. you know close to five, and you were right. He benches like four eighty or something. You know, he's right there on that border. You just have a good feel for that because you've been doing this forever, and you're a big bencher. What are your thoughts? Uh, I know there's like articles and like Sports Illustrated and like even YouTube videos talking about like WWE guys or pro athletes. Like they said, uh, I think they said Tiger Woods benched three seventy five. They said. Um, who is it, like Batista or like uh, Brock Lesnar? I think they said Brock Lesnar benched 675. Have you seen some of those numbers? I've seen some of those numbers. I and they're all horse shit, huh? That's what you're telling me? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I could. there was a time when Tiger Woods maybe could have lifted that. I thought Brock's was lower. I thought I Maybe it was 575. I don't know. But, yeah, there's something where they went through every WWE lifter and said their best. I think they said Cena's, you know, like 515, and Mark's like, yeah, I've probably seen that. That sounds you know? about right, right? Uh, Cena's best best bench press is uh, four eighty four, I believe. Okay, then maybe they say that on the. I know they, yeah. there's a list. That's right there. Say it. Yeah, yeah, he's strong. Yeah, and yeah. then Mark Henry, whatever. Uh, six plus, something. John, you know, he tore his pack a few years ago. Right, and now he does kind of weightlifting, anyways. Over, he doesn't yeah. even. Yeah, Which I mean, I, a lot yeah. of those dudes are strong. Henry's a whole other ball game. Yeah, he's a that's, real he's a real strength that's athlete. One of the strongest humans to walk the planet. 
Yeah, he was a freak. Who's kind of, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, Ted Arcidi and Anthony Clark and stuff. Who else, uh, some people that you looked up to or people that you look up to now? Like, well, Ed what Cone, do you, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, Eddie Cohn. That's about as good fucking, as you get. The old fucking man. king. I love how. Um, when Motivated he, and is inspired by some of the things some of the guys are doing today. Oh, well, with Ed Cohn, I was going to say what I love about him so much. When he did a meet, he wanted to win that meet. He, he didn't go, I want to win the 220 or the 198 or the 242. Yeah. He wanted to be the strongest guy on that platform. So you got to respect that. And now, Amazing. I mean, obviously, Eric Lillibridge, you watch him now, absolute just freak. Um, yeah, he's strong everywhere. Every movement, you know, pushing he's, the limits. What yeah. a 551 bench, 1025 squat, and uh, what did he pull? Eight fifty. So, yeah, some eight fifty. Yeah. So on that last meet, if uh, I think he, would he pull his hamstring on this the second deadlift? I think so. Yeah. So he had a shot at breaking the all time. Yeah. Which. Yeah, I mean he's he's going to close in on a twenty five hundred pound raw total. It doesn't even seem right. No, it doesn't. Se- I mean, there's just it, it's weird the way that powerlifting goes. You know, um, there's Andre Milanovchev. You know, is in the same realm as him, Freak. obviously, because Andre is currently the all time world record holder. But other than those two guys, there's nobody. It's a big drop off after uh, that. Yeah, no one's doing shit like that. Yeah. I mean, at all. <laughs> yeah, the lighter weight classes, obviously, yeah, the guys yeah, that are amazing. Guys are but yeah, phenomenal, but it's phenomenal, different. Yeah. But you know, there's some, Believ and. Uh, Pozdiev and then Dan Green, those guys put up stupid numbers in all three lifts, yeah. but, but the, nothing um, on that level. What's the other guy who went against Dan Green, but he didn't make weight? Zahir? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That yeah. yeah, that guy's out of his mind, huh? But think how long that record held until uh, Milanchev broke it. Yeah. Who, who, oh, yeah, yeah. Reinhout? Yeah, Reinhout. Hold Don Reinhout? We're probably with some ace bandage yeah, knee wraps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he probably walked it out. I mean, he's just. Yeah, I'm sure. Some old rickety you. piece of shit rack. Yeah, shitty bar. Unbelievably yeah. strong. Just that's how good that number is. It just happens to be two freaks at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know he was doing that uh, so long ago, too. You know right. what I mean? It's like, what, the fucking late 60s or something? Or 70s or yeah, something? Yeah, what kind of equipment did they have in the 60s? Yeah, I don't know. Some piece of shit. I'm such a diva now, you know? Like What's kind of your, uh, the way you start is you start like, you start lifting in your garage or? Start in the basement. Start in the basement. With the cement plates. Somebody did mom or dad buy plates or you have older brothers, sisters or I don't know how I got those. Hand me downs, garage sale. Got them and then uh well, like an old piece of shit set, like a yeah. Sears one with the, the bars close to your head, you know? Yep, yep. And then uh sand weights kind of deal? <laughs> Vinyl cover. Cement cement filled in the, those yeah. those old plastic ones and then uh I had a competition bench maybe at like fourteen. Say, got like uh, used up like two birthdays, two Christmases to yeah. get it, and and that was it. I was hooked. That was your thing. You were like, uh, were it. you into video games at all or anything like that? I mean, yeah, I played video games, but a little bit. But you were mainly into lifting. I wanted to be the strongest guy in the gym. Didn't care about necessarily at that time to be the biggest. I wanted to lift more than anyone at that gym. That's where I messed up. I wanted to be the best at Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he made the big mistake. <laughs> Fuck. If we can only go back. I could have been in that seat right now. See, Excite Bike, if you had been playing that. Oh, Excite Bike was dope. Secret. That's that game was about. great. They don't make them like that. <laughs> Fuck, man. God damn, we got to get some on like, Excite Bike. Fuck. Double dribble. God damn. Double dribble. The first game to start talking, man. <laughs> the fucking shit blew my mind. <laughs> Yeah, double dribble. I remember that shit. That shit was double awesome. Dribble. Yeah, that game was awesome. Remember uh, Punch Out back th- back in the oh. day? Like like Mike Tyson's Punch Out was fucking awesome, but the arcade game was sick. Right. The problem with the arcade game though is is uh, you know the joystick was like really late. Well, it's f- all sticky. <laughs> it never fucking Every- worked. Everybody had yeah. their fucking worked. sticky fingers on it. It never worked. You fucking hit it. All and that's just... about to be on the iPad in 2016. I know. We're dead. What? I think Nintendo did a deal with... Did you hear him? He just with, went, what? Yeah, <laughs> you did, too, the first time I told yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even have a controller. I think, you... I think it'll be on touchscreen. Yeah, gonna... I can't do that touchscreen crap. Oh, I'm too old school. Yeah. Maybe you could attach a controller to yeah. it. I yeah, you're I like plug it in. He'll try to he'll yeah. try to plug in his old Nintendo yeah. controller. Blow on it. <laughs> yeah, like the cartridge. <laughs> yeah, the so fucking. Annoying, oh man. man, it was a science. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they'll make a Bluetooth controller. Yeah, I think uh, Nintendo cartridges taught uh, all of us how to love a woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it really took a long time to start her up, didn't it? <laughs> God damn. That was Nintendo's secret. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. You don't know. I still don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I can get a video game to go, but ladies. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a mystery. 
So you just started uh, started freaking lifting. Uh, no coaching. No, you know, just kind of just doing your own thing. Or did you have? Uh, yeah, there's no bodybuilding.com. Yeah. How the hell did you guys Friends learn how to or lift? Friends or older brothers or? You don't want to know. <laughs> Buying like muscle and fitness magazines and following some fake Doreen Yates twenty set garbage. Yeah, it was our VHS. That was fake. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, VHS tapes. Just, or something just you guys in. would buy. <laughs> I, mean, I swear, because I started like really lifting when I was eighteen. You know, that's uh, I don't know, two thousand seven. Five ten minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. that was like two thousand seven. <laughs> but like, I would just Google like how yeah, to bench press, and like Dave nice. Tate would pop up. You know, or, or the, his fat face would pop up. We didn't have any of yeah. that. I so mean, you're just lifting like idiots magazines. probably. You, you got a, uh, let's take, remember Muscle Media 2000 came Oh, that was the like, fucking A, Bill Phillips, man. <laughs> yeah, that was God damn. Bill Phillips, I don't even know who he is, but I know he wears the Jack and Tan shirt. Well, yeah. He, his brother did that, uh, how to put 50 pounds on your bench press in Still the most successful like book I fitness, ha- I think. I stumbled on that. Yeah. I have it from like 20 years ago. And it has my original number still in it. Nice. Oh, shit. Have. You got to publish that shit. <laughs> that thing is old. You know. used to train like that a little bit, though, because that, I mean, from what I remember from that book, I can't barely remember some of it, but I think I think it's an old, uh, like, pyramid kind of thing, like where right. you would go higher reps in the beginning, and then you'd go down to lower reps, and then you'd go back up to higher reps. Is that is that something Within you would a workout? Mess with? Yeah. And there were negatives, too. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean... I did. I've done a Bulgarian training method. You remember that two times a day training, you've dude. Done it. I, remember, <laughs> I remember. I remember. You told the story. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, yeah, my brother uh, had like some book that had the Bulgarian system in the it. I'm like, the summer's yeah. coming up. Yeah. I can work out three times a day. This is fucking perfect for me. I, I was know the so book pumped. I, I still got like two or three of those books. Yeah, like, that was great. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. You know, some people have told me that you. Uh, you really love that kind of shit. You have a bunch of books and you're into supplements and stuff. Yep. I yeah, mean, you even told us earlier you make your own pre-workout. Make everything. Yeah. Everything I make. What, uh, what kind of stuff are you throwing in your pre-workout? You buy bulk powders, but like what, what kind of stuff? It'd be uh, creatine, caffeine, guarana. Um, oh, guarana. Beta alanine, ribose, citrulline malate. What else? Could be forgetting something. And then I'll do an intro workout. This pre workout well, costs seventy eight dollars per <laughs> scoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the vanilla gorilla coming towards you. Yeah, damn. <laughs> Only flavor is vanilla. Yeah, you got a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, and actually actual oh, real dosages right. that actually would be effective. So yeah, yeah, it's a couple grams. But it's a ton of tons of powder. How do you flavor it? You just take it to the face. I have flavoring. I yeah, water flavoring. Because beta alanine stuff tastes pretty gross, doesn't it? Yeah, it tastes pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> but if you just, you could just get Kool-Aid powder and throw it in. Yeah, or mix it in with Gatorade or something yeah. maybe. Well, get, it'll probably still taste pretty funky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about an uh, intro workout? In, intro workout, uh, BCAs and electrolytes. And, uh, and you buy those bulk? Yep. Dang. That's it. Make your own stuff. What about food? What about food-wise? Uh, you make your own food in bulk? That's what I don't like. <laughs> um, stick to, you know, just... High quality proteins, ton of eggs, as much as vegetables as I could choke down, a uh, bunch of fruit, and uh, kind of basic. Yeah, at least in uh, Vegas they have some like healthy eating spots. Yeah, don't they have like a Muscle Grill or something like that? Me and the Smelly were talking about. There's nothing yeah. like that around here. Oh, where pro- you can just get like a a oh, ton of stuff. Protein Factory. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Greens and proteins. Right. I think there's another. Are you uh, meticulous with your meals? Do you try to like you know get five or six meals in a day or? No, nah, probably not. I don't think I get. I think um, based on how far you're along the scale, ecto, endo, meso, um, determines how many meals you have to get. I think I could stand when I watch him. Yeah. He's more of an ecto. He's naturally he, kind of skinny. Yeah, he needs those six meals. Are um, you saying that Stan's a bitch? <laughs> 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 Stan, you skinny bitch, if you're listening. No way he listens to us. Yeah, he only listens to his own episode. <laughs> yeah. That's it. When he, yeah. If Stan's on the episode, this yeah. is yeah. <laughs> yeah. You will ever listen to this. That's true. We can talk as much shit yeah. about it right now as we want. He'll never hear it. He'll never come back to him. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. more meso We were just talking about that the other day. Yeah, yeah that you, definitely you can, plays You can totally get away. Ectos have to overeat. I mean, there's dudes who, no matter what they do, can't eat weight. Yeah, like they just can, need can more calories, weight. more meals. More calories, and that late-night meal is the secret. That, like, right before you go to bed, full avocado, ton of nuts. Uh, Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> what right before bed? <laughs> Tons of nuts. <laughs> Tons Hear that, nuts. ladies? <laughs> Our two lady <laughs> listeners. You better get on those nuts. Tons of nuts. Got it. 11.30, nuts. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Bodo. <laughs> and uh, choke down about 16 ounces of cottage cheese, and you're all uh, 
16 inches of what? Mm? What? <laughs> what the hell? You'll be good for the night. <laughs> Put you right to sleep. <laughs> it's just important to get a big meal in basically, be- you know, before you go to bed for some of the people that have trouble gaining yeah, weight. Yeah, skinny bitches. And it's, and it's going to be slow because then the fat's going to slow down the... Uh, the digestion and everything. The cottage cheese to begin with. The cottage cheese is the slowest digestion. And you get all your farts out where you're sleeping. Exactly. So then, yeah. yeah that makes Kill sense. Birds no. Yeah. Yeah, my farts are just constant throughout the entire day, basically. Do you wake up whether to fart? I'm sleeping or not? You wake up to fart though, like a uh, even like a no. So I got, you wake I, up for like five seconds and you're like, Brrr, and then you're right back. <laughs> to no, sleep. I got <laughs> I got woken up the other day. I got elbowed in the chest by my wife. I'm like, I know, I know, I'm snoring. She's like, No, you've been farting for the last <laughs> hour straight. I'm like, You're full of shit. There's no yeah. way. <laughs> Seep it out. Call Silent Mike. He knows that I don't do that. He'll verify me. Yeah. I'm good. Like you can sort of maybe do something about snoring, but how are you going to stop farting in the middle Butt of the night? <laughs> Butt plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She That's a little could, intimate. For I, we could uh, invent that, actually. I think she just wanted me to sleep outside. Yeah. Well, if you and if you stick in a butt plug, you're going to start floating up toward the ceiling at some point, right? Yeah, like I mean, Willy Wonka's yeah, factory. Exactly. Start burping it up. Oh. Well, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Burp something so some, gross uh, it's a Reverse fart? peristalsis. Oh, that was yeah. Shit coming out your mouth. Goddamn. The shit smelly says. Yeah, I don't know. That's disgusting. What's life like in uh, Vegas, man? Everyone knows Vegas for like parties and whatever. We've been talking for 45 minutes already? God, God time flies when you're with this handsome yeah, devil. Yeah, what do you got going on in Vegas, buddy? What's it like? A bunch of weirdos everywhere? Oh, there's weirdos, right? Yeah, you go to the gym, there's just people wearing nothing, doing squats mm-hmm. or something. And then you got the, uh, when the Olympia comes, you know. The worst. Yeah. The Olympia, yeah, have you been to the Arnold, yeah? Yeah, I've been to Arnold. I, I thought it was a little overrated. I like the Olympia better. Yeah, the Arnold's fine. Uh, they're both, I love them both. But you go to the Olympia and there's a certain type of person running yeah. around. You go to the Arnold, it's more like random people. At least some people are in like collars, like just a golf dad or something. To, to give but you at, a, at the Olympia, there's some fucking Yeah, I have a great time saying. at the Olympia. The, um, <laughs> to give you an idea how funny the Olympia is, at the Orleans, when uh, they're one of the major hosts of it, um, when you get a room, there's a piece of paper that says <laughs> to not dispose of your needles into the trash can. Oh my God! It great. says that on every room when during the that's a great system. That's like a, where were we smelling? <laughs> Was it the Arnold? There's somewhere they're trying to bring me and Smelly uh, extra towels because they thought we were tanning oh each other. Oh, my God. Or they thought we were so gay. <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, that was the Arnold. That was yeah, the Arnold. Was they're like, oh, uh, sir, we just had, like, coffee. We had caveman coffee. Eric, so do we look gay? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, they you thought know, we were don't about answer to that. rub each other down all day. Yeah, that was that was horrible. That was very <laughs> judgmental yeah, of them. Yeah, it was. It was pretty bad. Just because we lift some weights. They didn't look anymore. so straight themselves. <laughs> Who were maybe, kidding? Maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah, they knew. Maybe they, why, so why you're getting this special consideration. They wanted to come in and yeah, rub us weird. down or something. Yeah. The hotels in Vegas are great, though, like during the uh, Olympia. The best. The, the, uh, you see people like uh, like we're waking up early to like get breakfast and then head to the uh, event or whatever. And we see people, they're going back to their hotel room. Yeah, stumbling. Six or seven. Oh, yeah, yeah dresses morning, are ripped. Just, yeah. No, but also just people watching. You walk through the hotel and Ronnie Coleman's walking through. You know, it's so awesome. Yeah, with right. some nice clown pants on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. I like yeah, to think buddy. of as MC Hammer pants. Yeah, MC Hammer. Amazing. Tell us about your arm wrestling days, buddy. Uh, what what was going on with some of that shit? Was that uh, that was all pre powerlifting? Yep, all pre powerlifting. Um, I was really focused on it. Wanted to be the best in the world at that. Um, did a couple competitions. Won a couple competitions, and kind of realized you couldn't do both. I wanted to bench. I wanted to do arm wrestling. And um, a lot of older arm wrestlers who are unbelievable, like John Brzezink, still in his 50s, still could beat anyone almost. Even Sylvester Stallone with a backwards hat? <laughs> That's actually who the movie's based on. Yeah. Oh. It's a true story. Uh, yeah. John also wasn't that big, right? He wasn't a huge guy, right? He, he's. That's pulling John, dominant, right? That's yeah. the documentary, right? Probably the most dominant athlete in any sport comparatively that ever in, an, in existence. He would beat, like, let's say the best Russian in the world, and the guy would be like 400 pounds, and they'd fly him out there, and he'd run through him and weigh 200 pounds. Wow. And then just... He would just he, murder everybody. I've arm wrestled him a couple Anybody times. Anybody who hasn't seen that, you should fucking watch it. Pulling John is, is pretty He's goddamn amazing. cool. It gives you, you know, gives you a good glimpse of uh, how, what arm wrestling is all about and how dominant this guy was as an athlete. He would win three to four classes easily. And he actually won the over the top. It was actually a real tournament in Las yeah. Vegas. He's in the movie. He has a little cameo in it, and um, it just shows you that it, it's not the type of sport where you could. It's, it's not a young man sport. You could be any age and, and be dominant. Benching is kind of more of a young man sport. I'd probably say past your mid forties, you're probably not going to probably hit a PR. 
after 45, it'd be really hard unless you're probably staying to uh, – <laughs> Are you going to be able to go back to uh, arm wrestling, you think? That's the plan. Uh, I definitely want to arm wrestle again. I like it. but uh, What's next then, benching or arm wrestling? I'll bench it. Benching and then arm wrestling. I'll bench until I rip my shoulder off. What's the goal with the bench? Like, it, like it, let's say, let's say you do come back from this uh, shoulder injury that you've had that slowed you down a little bit. Uh, let's say you get back and you hit seven forty four or so, and you just will that be? You think that'll be it, and you'll go off and uh, maybe arm wrestle? No, it's not good enough. I want seven fifty. Seven fifty. Okay, I like that number. The the kilo number is seven fifty five. Yeah, that's, that's and or seven forty nine is your other choice. You're fucked. I think you could add those. Uh, yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, five hundred yeah. grams for a world. Yeah, record. yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, so like seven fifteen change maybe. Seven fifty. That's damn. a nice That's a huge bench. That's it insane. Can be done. I think I've. I think I've been close to that strength uh, at a time. What was the deal with arm wrestling? Uh, did you? You know, how how were you? Were you competitive? Were you good? I mean, for the first three tournaments I won, I walked in and won, and uh, big tournaments or just local shit or what? Decent sized tournaments. It was uh, one of the highest-paying tournaments in California. Um, More money than powerlifting? At the time, I think it, I think I ended up with like fifteen hundred bucks. So yeah, Can't maybe. Complain about it. <laughs> yeah. Who is the big guy that I see every year uh, at the Olympia? Older guy, probably about probably about sixty years old. Huge. He's real. Richard real big. Lupkis. Yeah. So Great guy. so you're being very humble right now because Richard told me that you're the best talent he's ever seen. He he told me he was like Eric Spoto is a fucking freak of an arm wrestler. Yeah, he just said like he's like that guy man. He came in and he went. He told he told me that you went to like some camps with some pros and it just was, basically yeah. ran through some of these people. It was mostly training, so it was like you know just like in powerlifting, someone comes into your gym, benches six fifty. It's amazing, but until you do that on the platform, yeah. it doesn't count. So right, m- more of those accolades was from. Um, beating some of the best guys in the world uh, of the top 10 guys at least three of them at that time i had beaten in practice doesn't mean it's the exact same thing as a set match you guys, right yeah but, but, but you're but, up but, there but pulling heads up with some of the top guys i had beaten in practice and uh devin lorette who's number one ranked at the time he came over i got a couple wins on him he definitely uh th- the guy does not get tired so I, I I got him down a couple times, and then later on he definitely dominated me. Right. And uh, he he started right and saying it was like one of the most power he's ever felt in his life. So then it started. Right. A couple other guys too. Arm wrestling is really interesting. I mean, you know, when you start to uncover some of these sports, you start to really realize what a real sport it really is. Like, you know, with something like MMA years ago when it first started, you know, they, they, they were trying to outlaw it. They actually did outlaw it for a right. while. They couldn't even get it sanctioned anywhere. People thought it was barbaric. They just thought it was just fighting. They thought it was, they just thought it was insane. They weren't used to it, you know. But then as they uncovered it, they kind of discovered that it's a real sport. Do you find that to be true with arm wrestling? Like some of these guys are, are fucking awesome athletes. One hundred percent. It's um totally surprised me. I've been arm wrestling my whole life, not competitively. So I just I really thought it was you just lock up and who's ever stronger wins. It is truly a chess match. There's moves, and then there's other moves, and there's moves that counter other moves. And this guy could beat this guy, but then we'll get killed by the guy who's so maybe beat that more guy. like yeah, maybe more like regular wrestling. Yeah, and using uh, I, I can't say his last name that well. Richard Lupkis. Yeah, using him as an example. Uh, that guy's a that guy's a mutant. I mean, I saw a video of that guy. I want to say maybe he's bench pressing around 500 pounds. Yes, he he's over for, 500 pound bencher. Yeah, for maybe even two or three reps or something like that. Uh, I saw him benching 405 super fast. With, you know, with greatest of ease. I saw him doing pull ups with a ton of weight around. You know, I saw him doing the stack with a seated. I saw him do, doing all these kind of things. Is that kind of uh, par for the course with uh, with arm wrestling? Are these guys a lot of these guys uh, mutants? Yeah, Richard, well, you just happen to pick out probably the mutant of all mutants. He, if you look at his films in the 80s, they did uh, what's called sit-down arm wrestling, where that was less technique and more pure horsepower. You're, you're sitting in a chair. Sitting in a chair, and he was so dominant, it, I don't recall ever seeing a match. It was a flesh. I'd never <laughs> seen it. <laughs> he's just ripping he people's was, arms he, off. He was that dominant. Yeah. And um, he's not considered a technical arm wrestler. Right. He doesn't even... Arm wrestling is one of those things that you could practice all you want with weights, with cables. You will not be good, really, if you don't train with guys. So arm wrestlers have a team. So it's really up. gay. Yeah, it's very gay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Gotta train with not guys. Not as bad as powerlifting, I don't think. 
Only if you train naked. So uh, you, you got to go against guys because you're feeling the different moves and countering the different moves. It's so Richard Lovekey doesn't train with no one. He's like on a Minnesota farm. <laughs> right. He's that strong. Right. So the only way you're probably going to beat him is to kind of cheat him. It's not cheating. Yeah, yeah. It's, Pull um, some tricks. Yeah, you you you're doing some garbage to beat a guy like that. <laughs> He's that that much power, pure pure power. Some dudes are just speed guys. So Travis Bajan is so fast left-handed, and if you stop him. You beat him. Right. I've seen him right-handed. Someone just stops him. He just gives up and lets you beat Travis him. Travis is the guy that yells at everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, he's fine. Travis is he's, a great guy. He's he, fired up. He's uh, definitely one of the coolest guys. The first tournament I ever went to, he was like the guy there, and he came over to me specifically, introduced himself to me, and was talking oh, to me. Oh, cool. So he's a really cool guy. So now you're, uh, you know, your focus is on powerlifting. You want to come back. You want to hit that you know, 750-plus bench. And uh, what are some other things you got going on? And the shirt it says Vanilla Grill on the front. It says ericspoto.com on the back. You got a book out, a bench, uh, like a bench press ebook or something like that, right? Right. I got an ebook. Um, probably at the end of next year, I'm going to release a, a lot more ebooks. Um, I do custom training, um, one-on-one custom programs, things like that. Got some supplements in the work. Oh, got a cool. Got couple things to burner. I got a. Uh, squat device that I'm working on, which sounds weird for me. I know <laughs> it should be a bench device. But yeah, I think you got that. Well, on, you told me about it, and it sounds great. You know, it sounds interesting, and I think it's I think it's something that will work really well. I think it'll, so. It'll I think it'll fit has, into a lot of people's uh, needs. I think if it's a lot of uh, without giving too much information out there, too a lot of rehab, prehab, and a lot of uh, athletes' needs. Yeah. Well, you know, an athlete. You know, why do they need to always do like a regular squat? We always talk about it here on a podcast. They can get away with a box squat. They can get away with uh, even squatting. Slingshot bench, uh, block pulls. They don't need to do the competition lifts always. Right, just because not that those exercises aren't extremely effective. It's just that the risk-to-reward ratio sometimes is increased a little little too much. And and your idea fits that pretty well. I think – there was a major strongman back in the day. I don't know why his name's missing me. One of the most famous guys ever. That's how he tore his shoulder a peck was actually squatting. Mm. Right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of demands on the upper body. Is it Kazmaier, maybe? Yeah, Kazmaier. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I was forget his name. Yeah, yeah. Bill Kazmaier, one of the... One of the greatest ever. Yeah, one of the greatest strongmen ever and one of the greatest powerlifters of all time. He had the all-time powerlifting record. He right. had the... He had all-time the big, bench record. He had the all-time bench record. He hit like a 661, how crazy, right? How crazy is that? He had the all-time bench record with a 661 bench. Right. And at the same time, he was just destroying people in strongman. Like, that's nuts. I think they didn't allow him to do two or three events. Yeah. I, th- I remember reading something like that. Yeah, I mean, imagine, uh, you know, imagine today, you know, Brian Shaw having the all-time bench press record along with the all-time right. total, along with being the most dominant strongman in the game. It'll, like, it'll never happen again. It's no. Too, it's too specialized I, yeah, at this I point. just don't think so. Although, and you know, a- you know, someone like Sojourner Savickas is – he he may may perhaps be one of the strongest guys ever walking the face of the earth. Uh, you got uh, I mean, there's a couple other guys that you got to put in that same category. But you know, Sojourner Savickas, uh, you know, yeah, he from what I hear, he can bench press. He's deadlifting around 900 pounds. He's you know squatting around 900 overhead pounds. Overhead press, ridiculous. Yeah, overhead press and fire. You know, so it's just you know I'd love to see that guy jump into some powerlifting. Hopefully. Hopefully it's not too late. Hopefully we'll see him uh, jump into some powerlifting. But it, it's, some of the strength levels of some of these people out there is just fucking it's unbelievable. Great. It's, it's great. insane. I got queued up here <clears throat> all three lists from that uh, record-breaking day. If you want to maybe give us some commentary on them as they roll by, and then I'll just link this in. First off, let's just say how podcast. handsome you look right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before before you you know before you uh, start on this just a little bit too much. Um, you know, what was some of the preparation leading, like kind of leading into this? What were some things that you had to do differently from going from being a uh, Justin Bieber YouTube sensation <laughs> to actually becoming a real-life powerlifter? I, I mean, it starts with um, peaking at the right time. Because the thing is with a gym lift is you go every Monday or you go every day, and you're going to have that day you feel good. And you have a day you feel like crap. When you have a meat set, there's no feeling like crap. You got to be on point that day because there's no, no, there's no second. That's chance the time to do it. So you just got to try to f- fine tune that body to where you're at the strongest possible state on that day. And um, I tried to work on that. I tried to get as much food as possible in me. Without um, going in uh, too much detail in like a peaking program or whatever, you know, if people want help, they can go to your website. But just give us a, a, a maybe a four month lead up or uh, excuse me, four week lead up, just a broad idea of how to how to peak. Well, four week would be pretty short, so. Yeah. 
Before, yeah, which is if, fine. I, if I even stretch it out a little longer, I would go from higher reps to try to actually build muscle and then start going to About lower reps. About 12 weeks out maybe. Yeah, and then go to lower reps to try to now take that added extra muscle because obviously a, a bigger muscle has the capability to be a stronger muscle. And then now I'm going to go to lower reps. And um, I'm not the biggest guy on singles. I will do them. Uh, I know a lot of guys who do way more singles than I do. We you uh, stick to doubles, triples? I like triples. I really like triples. I feel like... It's such a high number. It's so close to the single, yet I'm under tension for so much longer mm. that I feel like I'm going to get way more. And in some ways, it's safer. Like uh, you know, if you, you know, if you're going for a triple and you only hit a double because something feels awkward, something feels you could always put yep, it back in the rack out. if you have right, to. Right. You know. So and the I'm, weights are less. You know, it's not as heavy, so it's going to be a little less wear and tear overall, perhaps. Yeah, that, actually, I was going to ask that earlier. Like, how many times before this run up did you really? Do a max single, know what your one rep max was. Never. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do you ever uh, uh, test an opener, like a easy single, a week or two out? Or I had done seven oh five three times in a day, but that, so that'd be more than my opener. But um, to to do a heavy single that late in the game, I feel like more bad could happen than good. Because yeah. if you hit it, okay, now that's that's a weight. Now if you miss it, that's going to be in the back of your head. Yeah. The, right. The, the, now with the triple, you, you, you know where your opener is. Th- then you, based on that, you're gonna pick that second attempt. And, and if you're going for a world record, it, it's, it's a no-brainer. You got no choice. Yeah, you, you know, know what the what number you is. Yeah. Something that I was taught at Westside Barbell, and you don't see too many people do, um, because I think everyone's just kind of scared to do it. But what Louis Simmons would always say is that you train through your meat, not like to your meat. So, for example, with you, like he would probably even say, don't even really worry about the single. Who gives a fuck about your opener? You're not even there to do an opener. Just keep training. Just keep getting stronger. And you kind of hear uh, some complaints from some of the CrossFitters when they, they do the cross this CrossFit Open or they have to go to, like, regionals or something. It, it sidelines their actual training. And it yeah, actually makes so them – Well, it actually makes them, like, worse. Like, you know, and so right. in some cases, when you come down to those last three weeks, if you only do single, 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 maybe you're not getting enough volume. Maybe you're not getting the training in right. that you need yeah. to yeah. really be stronger. I but you're totally fearful agree. of the meat. You're like, oh, my yeah. God, I got to, you know, I got to yeah. see where I'm at. But you probably don't even really need to test where you're at until you're at the fucking or meat. The, what's the benefit of seeing where you're at? Right. It, it's actually going to put a limitation on your Instagram, your nervous, Instagram so likes. You just need to I, see. I don't want that limitation on my brain. I don't want to know I missed a 715. Because yeah. when that when that seven twenty two comes on, you're gonna really second guess yourself. Six seventy five for three, you're like fuck. It's another twenty five pounds to do seven hundred. I'll smoke that fucking right. thing, and you don't even really need to know what it feels like all that much. Yeah, exactly. Last question on the prep. Uh, when when was like your last heavy session? Ten weeks or ten days out, three days out, two it, weeks it's out. A, it's about like a ten day out. Yeah, and then you just hit something like some speed work. Maybe. And then I want to get under it again and, and and do some maybe singles with like. 65 percent just yeah. just to get under it feel stuff dial in the form yeah three to five days totally off and then go time there it is probably about like five days off no, so simple uh, roll it and then get some food in me try to eat as much as possible you know when you're training at that level whoa who's getting, that handsome devil in the back meals in you. look at the cameo <laughs> Silent Mike, making 10 pounds appearance. less muscle in that picture. We got 15 pounds less. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of a bitch. I'm still a skinny? bitch. Is that a crush country right now? Uh, what is this opening uh, weight here? I'm going to say 660. That could be wrong. 660. That's very uh, prototype gangster raps you got going on. Yeah. Huh? This is uh, the very this first. Is what brought them out the game, I think. I yeah. Think mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the very first gangster raps, I think. Oh, yeah. More questions about what I was sniffing than it's anything always, else. Usually. Yeah. Always. Sniffing a pair of panties. I did a whole video on it. He's got like 60 <laughs> men's <laughs> panties. Get you fired up. Look at that. Oh. Wow. Fucking that butter. Fucking fast. That, that felt easy. Do you, I mean, do you remember some of this? I thought you did 675 in the warm-up room, so that had to be heavier than that. 675 in the warm-up room was when I bombed. Uh, oh. That came up like nothing. Remember, that was smoked. It, that was so fast. I, ch- I choked that day. I mean, I, everything that could go wrong went wrong. It's not an excuse. It's my own fault. I mean, I... I blame just, Silent Mike. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, uh, maybe if I was more jacked, it would have helped us all. I totally... I, I forgot my belt on the 716, matter of fact, I think. I don't even think I had my belt. Oh, man, let's do it. Now this, uh, so this one here, this is the 716, I believe. Which oh, I, uh, can we pause it real quick? I think I'm in the back sipping a white monster. Just to let the... This is what, three years ago? Mm-hmm. I started this white monster fucking this trend. Is Everybody it, thinks confirmed? they started this. 
This is three years ago. I'm back there fucking sipping away. Smelly didn't even drink energy drinks then. I got him addicted. Two years ago. Nope. Sorry. I uh, I wasn't into energy drinks. Uh, some pre workout I was into. But yeah, I, I, I could. I didn't. I couldn't do pre workout about five years ago. I, I need to try yours, uh, Eric, because like it always jacks on my stomach. Regardless of caffeine, I can you poo. I can handle caffeine. I can handle creatine. Obviously, I can handle the white this stuff. monster uh, phenomenon. Really started though when Jim kind of started like Joking talking about, about his. Yeah, well, yeah, he started yeah. talking about his white monster in kind of a yeah. disgusting. But I'm just saying that weird sexual way. I said I was that was making us disturbed. Yeah, I said I was all jacked up on white monster. Yeah, you popped up. <laughs> actually, is the word I was. That's white just, monster. I'm just saying that this is this word. is way throwback. Mark's back there, half naked in a singlet. <laughs> Eric's smashing world records, and I'm starting world trends. This lift, uh, I was a little nervous. I jumped the call. Um, this, this is, is a 716, yeah. This is definitely a questionable lift. Yeah, this freaked me the fuck out. I went to, like, the judges. I went to the scores table, and I, you know, I, I put judges in the chair, <coughs> and uh, they are there, uh, you know, and I, I trust uh, them to make the right call. Everybody's nervous. Yeah, that's a huge lift. But uh, yeah, there was <laughs> that was a touch and go bench press. <laughs> that was touch and go. They gave you white lights. I couldn't overturn it. I was powerless. I you know, there's not much you can really do. Even though I am the state chairman, I wasn't happy about that. Yeah, what you, you can't really. Your there's reaction no, uh, wasn't that great. There's no, no, no replay. I wasn't happy with it. There's no replay in powerlifting. You I, know, I wasn't happy with it. I felt like um, it's paused in the picture. <laughs> I, ju- I just, you know, at that stage, it, it's such a build up for someone. That would be where my disadvantage came into play. I'd only done one meet previously and most people get to do like 10 meets where no one knows your name right when this is like everyone's talking about it the justin bieber effect you got yeah so you're, you're coming out the gate with with all the pressure in the world and um but you got one more attempt and this one i was like i'll, I'll wait till i hear him say it well and, instead uh, of stan you know stan was telling me too uh you know kind of leading up to this that you don't really like the crowd like you're not really into that kind of thing so was that different for you too yeah, I mean, I'm the kind I mean, of not that you don't like it, but you, you, that's not your thing. I, I, some people swear they thrive off of it, get stronger. Right. I mean, I'm going to train max out crazy, kill myself by myself in the gym or with a right. thousand people there. There's no difference. Right. And here we go. We got the 722 on there. Yeah, and I waited and I heard him. Yep. Popped it up. That's a legit it press. Was a grinder. Shaking. I maybe had two, three pounds max left in me. Probably not even another five. It was close. Yeah. Well, and and doing the seven sixteen before that probably took a little out of you. you know? Yeah, it's and, kind and of a small jump for like a world record yeah. holders, right? They start making even in the bench forty pound jumps. You, you did a bunch of lifts above above right. seven hundred. That's hard. That's actually what makes going for a world record so easy. When other people, you know, they they don't know what to do. Your third lift, it, you have no choice. Yeah. You know what it is. You know what it takes to beat it. So it's. You're either gonna hit it or you're gonna miss Look the try. Look freaking forearm! God damn, it's a big boy. I think I was I was uh, three fourteen that day, and then I had told Stan I was three twenty because he was telling me to as eat? long as you're three twenty, <laughs> you, you'll be okay. So I was like scared to tell him <laughs> that I that I only weighed three fourteen. So I was like, yeah, I was three twenty. I had, like boots on. I, had, like, <laughs> I weighed everything because I knew. I didn't want to tell him I didn't make the uh, three twenty cutoff that he was looking for. Oh well. You uh, next time next time around, you're gonna try to beef up a little bit more, get up to like three thirty or so. I had two goals that I wanted to do. I, I wanted to do a, maybe as I'm like progressing up, I would have liked to do a bench seven hundred under three hundred. I think uh, that'd be a pretty impressive feat. I don't think it's ever been done. Well, it's never been done, but uh, especially if uh, as, as a guy my my height, that's actually uh, right. That's that's pretty tough to do, and then. Um, from that point, but but if I'm not at that weight, then I would just skip that and, and just go to seven fifty. Well, my I'd want my opener would be uh, pretty high, and then my second attempt would have to be over seven twenty two, right. because anything less than that is pointless. Right. And then uh, the third attempt is going to be sh- the least amount over seven fifty, whatever that is, and I'll either go for it or miss it, but I'm going for it. What do you think drives you? What do you think your motivation was to break the record in the first place? Um, the fact that I th- knew I was capable of it, the fact that um, it's like all I want to be able to lift is what I'm capable of lifting. It doesn't. If someone goes out and benches 800, it is what it is. Um, I want to be able to bench the most I'm capable of. So at the end of the day, I can't say I didn't give it my best effort. I didn't try my hardest. 
right? So but no this regrets. this is about a little bit more than just doing your best, though. This is about doing better than anybody has ever done before. Yeah, any human being ever. Any human being it, ever. It happens to match up that my best. It just so be. happens to be that way. You just so happen to kick that much ass. I mean, if I was benching 500, I probably – wouldn't what about as like a, what about as like a kid or something like were you you know determined to like you know do something to be something to you not, know is there some sort of driving force not, behind all this that we should know about not so much not from the fame aspect which is what's weird i never right, even right. like when i posted those videos on youtube i wouldn't even post my name when i would post all those names uh th- those are initial videos i didn't even right. put my name on it well i remember also too you're you're fairly self-conscious you're like don't post that i look fat and i'm like <laughs> fat the fuck are you talking about you got a 20 inch forearm that's all muscle it's like talk- i mean uh it was about just i love strength i love the idea of old like vikings gladiators just true alpha males that are just you know not physique models, greased up. I mean, if that's what you like to do, that's what you like to do. But Thanks. You're motivated by it. Thanks for respecting me. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing boy shorts and <laughs> greasing up. And, I mean, it's just the ultimate thing is um, there's a saying. I don't want to butcher it. It's not by, by like people measure a man by the largest stone they can carry. Or when Benedict, me and him had a conversation, I loved what he was telling me, that back in the day in Iceland, if there was a land dispute, it was who could lift the biggest rock? And that is the ultimate alpha yeah. male, just like no lawyers, no paperwork, no bullshit. <laughs> who can lift this rock and who can move it the furthest? And then, and I was right. And, right. And, that, and that's the, as, as male as you get. You would own a lot of land if it was for bench pressing. <laughs> let's put it that way. You'd own this whole fucking gym and the slingshot. That's for sure. Yeah. Born in the wrong century. God damn. Uh, has training, uh, you know, uh, you know, been a, a big staple in your life to kind of keep you on track and keep you away from, you know, it, we we have a lot of people on the show that have dealt with addiction or drugs or alcohol or who've fallen into a slump, depression, whatever right. those types of things are. There's a lot of bullshit, you know, in people's right. lives, a lot of distractions and a lot of negativity. Has training been like something that you've been able to kind of hold on to over the years? Training is therapy. Without training, I don't know what I would do. Like every bit of frustration, every bit of, you know, every issue you have, you could put out on the weights. And when you're done with that day, you feel a thousand times better. There's no need to go talk to a shrink. Just go in the gym and kill yourself. And when you leave, you feel amazing. That's it. I like that style. I like that. (laughs) I tell people all the time, no competitions, no YouTube, no any of this. I'd still be at some grungy gym trying to lift the most I could humanly lift. I just, I think the power of training is like infinite. You know, the things that it can solve, you know, like diabetes, ADHD, the list of things goes on. The list of things goes on and on. It kills. I had such Uh, a temper before I powered lift. People with even like uh, post-traumatic stress disorders and all kinds of things can be solved through training. Obviously, you might need to seek out more help depending on the level, uh, you know. Yeah, we're not telling every psycho out there. Yeah, I'm not saying it's going to necessarily work for everybody, but I do think that it can help everybody like maybe not solve all their problems but it should be able to help you get a big dick anybody. from it yeah you get a huge cock from it yeah what's wrong with it may cock? not be yours but you know <laughs> yeah hey now and i mean that's the message we're always trying to deliver we're always trying to talk about is it's all about having a huge gag when it all comes down to it no natty spotters <laughs> so in the equation no natty mm. spotters Anyway, I think that's it. You know, uh, hit up the Vanilla Gorilla. Check him out. He's uh, on Instagram at... Is it Eric Spoto underscore or Eric yeah, under... Eric, Eric underscore Spoto. There you go. S-P-O-T-O? Yep. Did I get it right? God damn. Same thing. That's Eric's, a tough name. Ericspoto.com. Yeah, Ericspoto.com. No underscore, just Eric Spoto. Ericspoto.com. Dot com. He's on Instagram. Or you're on Twitter as well, I guess, probably. I don't yeah, know. I'm on Twitter. I've kind of... A little bit. Not the super most active. Facebook. Guy. I see Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, I got to start doing my athlete page. I, I've neglected that. He's posting up more videos. He's uh, being more proactive on there, even though he's like sure. me. He's getting fucking old. Older yeah. by the fucking second. That's what happens. Silent Mike's getting younger. <laughs> Jim's rotting over here. We're all falling <laughs> apart. We're all turning into pieces of shit. You say I'm getting younger? Yeah, you're getting younger. Yeah, we're getting older. I'm just stealing your guys' fucking mojo. That's what he's stealing doing. our thunder. I feel like it's an episode of The Twilight Zone. Mm. You wouldn't know about that, though, Mike. God damn. Yeah. Uh, help us buy yeah. a floating uh, skateboard. 
you know, go to supertrain.tv and buy a shirt or something so we can afford that <laughs> floating. It's and floating we can come to a, uh, you know, a city near you and do our podcast on floating on skateboards. floating skateboards. You That's think you can show us how to ride one of those, Mike? Because we oh, don't yeah, know how to yeah, do yeah. it. I, I, I skateboarded a little bit when I was a kid. You probably did, I you fucking nerd. Yeah. I definitely Yeah, cargo it. shorts. You fucking. were such a nerd. Yeah, I was on it. Big hey, fat white check shoes. out my, <laughs> <laughs> my basketball. Oh, my God. I would have kicked your basketball down the street. I know I would have. I'd been like, "Fuck this guy." I w- maybe then I'd bench five fifty like you with his afro. Yeah, I know. That's what happened yeah, to you. Mark yeah. Mark started benching because someone booted his punted. Fucking- yeah, I punted my Jets football into the fucking woods. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna spit out your slingshot protein all over the Fuck place. Fuck you, here. buddy! I'll bench you. Now who's that guy who's hearing this? You know Joe Garlop. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, yeah. you son of a bitch. Joe Garlop, uh, you're probably uh, still in the uh, state penitentiary. Oh, uh, if you're listening, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the fuck the guy is. I don't know. I don't know whether we have prison listeners or not, but I wouldn't be. Surprised. Yeah, I, I have prison fans. I get letters. I know you do. Yeah, I, know you do. I get letters. Someone tried to send you to it. church. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the fellowship. We thought yeah. they thought you were scared. I, I should go to church. Go to church. I should go to fucking church. Ice Cube's about. My to do parents that. are listening right now. And <laughs> they want me to go to church. Mom and Dad, I will not be at church this um, Sunday. Ice probably. Cube's coming to Sacramento. Ice Cube. Oh my God! Bone that's Thugs amazing. and Harmony. When's he coming? I don't know. Soon. Maybe he wants to bench. Do you know Ice Cube? <laughs> Personally, um, I met him. Oh no, no. I was thinking Ice T. No, I don't mm. know Ice Cube. Ludacris. Yeah. What? what rapper do you know? Everybody goes through Vegas. You got to know somebody. No, he knows a bunch of them. He used to like he used to do security and stuff for some of these guys, right? I don't know any of you those You can't guys. talk about it. Any of this? Yeah. Fifty Cent? No, nah, I wish I knew Fifty Cent. He's getting all jacked again. You seen him? Yeah, yeah Fifty's all jacked. Yeah. He's been training again. But you you did some of that for some people, right? Some security for some famous people or some shit. Not the type of famous people you know. Oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, oh you mean like that guy who was handling us? Poor Demetrius had to deal with people who were. Oh yeah, maybe semi-famous we were in people. Guy. Semi-famous. E-list, I think, e-listers yeah i think he got paid to do like you know beat people up or something I don't know. he's I'm, not talking I'm about so it. confused what's going on tonight uh i know this is i want to we're in the future in the, we're life. in the future we're in the future in the past but uh mayweather pacquiao oh that's tomorrow oh yeah you love yeah, fighting oh yeah i mean i'm rooting for pacquiao that's just a, we got to get you back to vegas in time a, for it that's yeah. a rough matchup that's gonna be that's gonna be a good one who are you rooting for pacquiao you got you got some money on it it's two to one. I mean, I, I, I would have liked that like more three to four to one. Cause, uh, Where are you going to watch the fight at? Your house? Uh, I, I'll call around and see what we're doing. Hmm. You guys go to bars? Or you guys go to the casinos at all? I know people that live in Vegas don't often go to casinos. You but. can't even put that fight at a bar. Yeah, just too many. Yeah, only at only at the uh, MGM oh, really? hotels, right? Closed circuit, they'll do. Because you, you need uh, not even like the sports. They're not allowing it. They yeah. blacked it out. Oh. They, they would have to pay so much, they would never make the money back. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, they like put some sort of thing on it. Oh. Band or something, I don't know. That's amazing. Well, those of you in the future who are listening to this on um, May 13th can tell us how it came out. Now, actually, it'd be really nice if you can just, like, call us in the past and let us know. Yeah, we can bet. Then we can get that fucking hoverboard. Uh, I just saw it. Mayweather won in the ninth round. Congratulations, (laughs) Floyd. Somebody did. uh, You got him him knocking Pacquiao out? Yeah, Yeah, ninth round. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happens, but he wins in the ninth round. Yeah, somebody predicted uh, Mayweather knockout in the tenth. Mm -hmm. I forgot who that was. Maybe Charles Barkley or somebody like that. I don't know if he's got the horsepower to knock out. You you don't think he'll tire him out? Pacquiao. I don't know. Who's your favorite fighter? Favorite fighter of all time. I mean, it's cliche, but of course it's Mike Tyson because that's the generation we grew yeah, up to. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. I mean, but I respect, uh, I'm big on the old fighters, uh, Rocky Marciano, Jack Dempsey. I love watching Every white man's fighters. got to pull Rocky Marciano out their ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you really watch his old footage, he was unbelievable. He was. Yeah. 49 and 0. Yeah. No one's done it since. Uh, what about MMA? You watch some of that shit? Of course. Who do you got in the UFC? Who's, your, who's some of your favorites? Mm. Joseph Benavidez? Slingshot athlete. I guess that's yeah. Just yeah. There you go. Yeah, you, you guys that, are man. you guys are teammates now. Yeah. There that, you go. That's the, that's a definite. Uh, he's got a fight coming up. Yeah, in no, about a month. Yeah. Who's he go against? Uh, Murray. Yeah. He's like the number three guy in the weight class. I forgot his name. Really? Yeah, Joseph's number two. This guy's number three. And then, and then De- uh, Mighty and Mouse then, is number one. Unfortunately, <laughs> Demetrius Johnson's but number it, one. He's hard to beat. It was a good fight though. Uh, oh, yeah. When Joseph yeah. fought Mighty Mouse. Yeah, the first time, it, the yeah, it first time fight. it went decision, and the yeah. second time Joseph got clipped with a pretty yeah. good shot. Yeah, and hopefully he gets another chance. But Mighty Mouse is a fucking man. Yeah. That guy's that guy's unbelievable. 
a lot of good athletes in those lighter they're weight so, classes. Yeah. You know, they're so fast, they're so quick. What about like uh, Chuck Liddell? Of course, I love Chuck. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck Liddell. He's just such he was the man. He was. He cool just too. fight anybody. You know. Yeah, I've met him a couple times yeah. in person. Super cool guy. That's cool. Yeah. It's crazy to think. You know, you just fucking just. The way that the way that those guys are just able to kick people upside their fucking head is fucking amazing, <laughs> unbelievable. Bones Jones, the freak. You know, you got a lot of mutants in the in the uh, UFC. You follow any any of uh, you know, you you have any favorites in the UFC other than? No, not particularly. Yeah, just no. like watching. Whoever uh, covers covers a bet that I put on <laughs> becomes there my favorite for that day. All right, I think that's it for today. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle. May all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smilly Bell on Twitter and Instagram. Did you just sing this? Um, <laughs> find me at uh, Sound of Mike, 2Ks, Instagram and Twitter. And Mike has a YouTube. Now. I got a YouTube now. You guys can go find that. I think it's uh, youtube.com backslash Silent Mike 95. Yeah. I didn't choose that number. It just popped up. Yeah. Everybody thinks that you were Who born in 1995. Silent Mike? Someone took a Silent Mike from you. Yeah, man. I think a regular Silent Mike. There's a tattoo artist, I think, named Silent yeah. Mike. He's, he's kind of popular. Not he's as not popular. the first Silent Mike, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, just the best. You, I thought you came out with this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I should have. Find that. C- Circle R, TM. Yeah. I'm Jim McD, STTV, everywhere that I would want you to find me. Follow the show on Instagram at Mark Bell's Powercast, Facebook.com slash Super Training Gym, and Twitter at ST Gym Sack. And uh, check out supertraining.tv. And we're out. Subscribe to Power Magazine at thepowermagazine.com. If you choose the digital edition, you can catch up on all the great back issues, take your training to the next level with Slingshot products and howmuchyoubench.net, and look for PSN products including NO Explode at bodybuilding.com. Mark Bell's Powercast is a production of supertraining.tv.